What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am out here on the river today, out here in the express of course, and I am on a mission to catch anything and everything that swims out here today. I have a, a whole bunch of assorted tackle with me. I've got, you know, crappie jigs, I've got grubs, I've got swim baits, I've got crank baits. I've got top water. I've literally got everything with me in the boat today and I'm just looking to catch some fish to be honest with you guys because over the last few days fishing hasn't been that great for us. Um, we just haven't really been able to put the pieces of the puzzle together at some different bodies of water that we have visited. So I have returned out here to an old trusty location that y'all are pretty familiar with and I'm hoping to get some redemption on my last few failed attempts of fishing. So. That is what we're gonna do. That is the plan. I'm gonna ease up that way. I'm gonna try to find some fish holding somewhere and uh, hopefully we'll start putting them in the boat. I hope y'all are excited to join along with me on today's fishing adventure. If y'all are, you know the deal. Smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and let's have a day of hopefully slaying some big old river fish. Let's go. There we go, fish on. Doesn't feel very big, but we are on the board with something. What is that? It's a little white bass to start things off. He bit the top jig. I've got a little two inch monkey milk grub on the top and a three inch little chartreuse grub on the bottom. Starting off with a little white bass. Can't complain, gotta start somewhere. Let's get back out there so we can get another one. We're just kind of fishing this little current seam right here. This is a spot where it actually kind of turns and comes back to me. The rest of it's rushing this way. It's kind of a cool little spot. There we go, hooked up again. Hooked up again. Oh, there's a fish coming up right there. Feels like another little fish, but it is something. It is something. It's another little white bass. And again, on that top grub, look at that. He's not miserably small, so I like that. Check it out, little chunky, little white bass. It's two in a row. There we go. There's another fish. Feels like another little white bass though. I saw him come up, he looked bigger when he came up. I might've got like a scraggler down below him. There's our third little fish of the day. Another nice little white bass, they're coming up again. There's birds going down on them. Hurry up, Cole. Sorry guys, if y'all were interested in looking at that fish, we gotta get back out here and get these bigger ones that are coming up right here in front of me. They're definitely bigger. Oh, he like ate it on top. How cool was that? How cool was that? What is that? That's a skipjack. It's a skip, it's a skipjack. Oh, that's what those fish are. They're freaking skipjack. Look at that, guys. There is our second fish species of the day, a nice skipjack. Now, if I had some catfish gear on me, you know that I would be cutting this guy up and chunking him out there, but I don't today, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna toss him back in there. That's cool, it looks like a little mini tarpon. He came up and smacked that thing. I guess that's what I'm seeing that are bigger. I thought they were striper. I guess they're skippies. Oh, what's that? What's that? Oh, it's a crappie. Look at that. Look at that, folks. We have got ourselves a crappie. Woohoo! That's our third fish species of the day. We've caught three white bass, a skipjack, and now a little crappie. Even the close to keeper, but I'm gonna throw them back. If we start wrecking some crappie, I'll definitely keep some, but as I'm sure most of y'all probably already know, we already have a lot of crappie in our freezer. We get on some striper though. Oh, hooked up again. Might keep some striper. I don't know what this is. Right after catching that crappie, I saw a fish blow up, so I threw over there to him and I got him. Feels a little bit nicer. Nicer white bass. Oh, yo, I think I had two fish on because my bottom jig is gone. What the heck? Something stole my bottom jig. That's a hard thump. I think that's what happened, guys. I think I got bit by two fish at once just then. There is another white bass, beautiful little fish. I've got to get tied back up. Can't be fishing with one jig now, guys. Okay, guys, you know what time it is. We've moved up here to the discharge and I have got my old trusty 
uh, pencil popper here in hand. We're gonna see if we can catch a couple of striper to mix in with the white bass, the skipjack and the crappie that we've already caught. Let's see what happens. You can see this thing has just been absolutely mauled by these fish out here. I haven't seen a whole lot of activity, but there should be something out there. At least I would think and hope. Fish on. Fish on top water. You can't tell how big he is. I didn't really even see the bite. I was taking a step back and I just heard the splash and looked out and it was where my bait was. He's not very big, but it is a striper. On top water, little guy. We'll take it. Get up here. He's in the boat. Look at that one. Nice little striper, probably two and a half, almost three pounds. Pencil popper in his grill. It's a nice one. We're going to send it back. We're on him. We're on him. We're on him with another nice striper. He's coming to me. Coming to me. Stay on there, big guy. Stay on there, big guy. Not an absolute freak, but he's a good one. And they're schooling all of a sudden. They have not been schooling at all. And they're just all of a sudden schooling a little bit. Come here, big guy. Coming up here. Let's get you off here so we can catch another one. They are, they are going nuts. We will definitely be throwing this guy in a live well. He got hooked up underneath his gills. Oh, wow. There we go. Nice striper. Oh, gosh. That was a mistake. Back in there with pimps popper, and we got ourselves another striper tripping over my rods. <laughs> Man, he hit that thing as soon as it hit the water. What is that? A stripe? It's a stripe. Over oh, here. This is crazy, guys. Oh, this is crazy. This fish actually has another treble hook in his mouth. Is it mine? It is mine. Okay. It's not that crazy anymore. It's my treble hook. <laughs> okay, it's not as crazy as I thought it was. Oh, I thought I'd just done something really crazy. Okay. At least I'm getting my hook back. I'm looking for something a little bit bigger, so we'll toss him back. Crap, I gotta put a new hook on my bait. It sucks. That's big fish land right there. He smashed it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Every time I land in that spot, I get absolutely wrecked as soon as it hits the water. Oh, he looks so big, but he's not. He's a good one though. He's a nice one. He just came running straight at me. Good one. Another nice striper. We'll get him in the live well. Well, first we'll get him unhooked. And then we'll go throw him in the live well. And we'll get back out there and see if we can get another one. Oh, there's one under it. <laughs> These fish are freaks. And I love it. I love them for it. Even the little ones, they're just so crazy. You want to see them all hooked up like that, but you hate to take them off when they're all got every hook point in them. Another nice little one. Back in nasty land over there. Oh. Oh my gosh, it's a monster. Oh, oh. Please don't miss it. I got him. Oh, I came off. I had him. He's off. Another one. This is not the same freaking fish that one came off to. Oh, that was a monster. No. Oh my. 
Oh my. Please get it. You got it. One of them got it. I swear, guys, those fish look so massive. I think that the biggest ones are biting it first and just missing it. And the smaller ones are getting up underneath it and getting it afterwards because that fish that first blew up on this thing looked like a 10 pounder. I mean, like really big. I mean, that's a good one. It's definitely a good one. But the one that bit it first was just, I'm telling you, it was a megalodon. I'm gonna catch one for you guys, promise. Oh. He got wacky rigged a little bit. There you go. That fish was kind of crazy to handle, but it's a pretty good one. We'll throw him back, he's borderline. My hooks look pretty decent. These aren't the best hooks I could be using, but it's all I have. Get back out there in nasty land. Get wrecked. I made a horrible cast. Oh, he's on it though. There we go, eat it. Hey! Bad cast play, it panned out. Oh my gosh, he's skiing in. We're just gonna ski this boy right up in here and get back out there. We almost skied him all in. On the boat. Another nice striper. We don't catch anything bigger than that, then we might have to keep a couple of that size, but I think we'll be able to catch some good ones. This guy. Getting smoked. Bye, Felicia. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think we should name this bait Felicia. I call it Felicia all the time. <laughs> Felicia got got just then. It's kind of funny. Those fish, they'll, uh, they'll be going pretty aggressively. They'll get really aggressive. You know, have some schooling. And then, you know, they'll stop schooling, but they'll still come after this bait really hardcore. And then they'll stop for like 10 minutes. And then, um, you know, you just kind of keep casting. All of a sudden, it's just like every cast again. There we go. There we go. Get him on the back deck. You want to get on the back deck? Back deck. Yes, sir. That's a good one. Nice. Another nice keeper. I told you guys we'd get another keeper here in just a second if we just kept our head down and kept casting. Let's put him in the box. Okay. All right, we got four in there. Actually, a pretty good number for what I'm wanting to do with him tonight. So we'll keep casting, of course, because oh, flip. Send our girl Felicia back out there. Oh my gosh, that's a monster. Is it really a monster? I don't know. He ain't bad. He ain't bad. He ain't bad. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way so you can see him. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, he's snagged up in something. Oh no, he's holding up in some fishing line. Okay, he's off of it. There's some fishing line out there. He got stuck on it. We're good though. He powered through it. We're powering through it. We're powering through it. We're overcoming adversity. We're getting these strappers on the boat. <laughs> no, we're not. I'm like refused to believe that they won't eat us one day. And catch one or get bit by one. Come on. If they want it faster? They want it faster. You gotta reel it faster. That's all it is. I'm reeling it too slow. These fish are amped. They don't want it slow. They want it burnt. They want it burnt over their head. They want to attack it. They want to unleash their inner primal instincts and kill it. That's what they want to do. And I love it. As we finally got one on a freaking swim bay. Oh, that felt good. There's nothing better than that. You know, we talk about getting a crappie thump. You know, a swim bait bite from a striper is like a crappie thump times 50. I knew it would work. Six cents whale in his face. Curious to see if a spoon will do anything to him. I don't know where that went. Oh, that went a long ways. <laughs> I got a bite. I got a fish. That was a good move, I'd say. 
We're just trying to see what the spoon would do to them. What it do is make them bite. Because they're not on that top water program. So I just assumed they probably sunk down to the bottom. And uh, I let the spoon sink all the way down there and we got us one. First cast with it. How about that? And it feels like a decent one. Of course, this is a lighter rod. This is just a seven foot one inch, six cent sensory, medium heavy. And I've got 12 pound test. The knife feels big, dude. How big is this guy? Do we have a dandy on here? Oh gosh, we got a dandy man on here, I think, guys. I'm keep him out of this cave. Oh gosh. Oh, 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 what we got here is a dandy one, guys. Get my net. We're gonna need the net for this one, guys. Come here, dandy man. Come here. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, that's a hefty one. That's a hefty boy. Ooh. Oh, it's always this dang little spoon that catches the big ones. I don't understand it. Oh, that's a good one. And that's what you like to see right there, guys. That's a good one. Let's weigh him real quick, just for funds. He's probably seven and a half. Could be bigger. Ow. Oh. Turned it off, but that was a seven pound, 13 ounce, I think. Pushing eight, bouncing around eight. That's a good one. We are definitely going to throw him in a live well. That's gonna be perfect eating. So I realized that I didn't have this camera here on the dash running, which is kind of unfortunate because I've been catching some pretty nice fish. And I know that y'all don't just love, you know, the whole chest angle. So that big one was awesome. Let me, I need to go get that. Let me just get that fish so you guys can see it. I want you guys to look at him. He was a nice one. Here's that fish we just caught. Beautiful, near eight pound fish. Didn't get an exact weight because it broke off, but it, it held like at 713 or 715. So really, really nice quality sized fish. Hoping to catch a few more of these. We've got definitely a nice mess to take home and eat tonight, which we're going to be doing in today's video. So if y'all are looking forward to some catching and cooking action, make sure to stick around to the end, but we're gonna make a few more casts in here because they're biting and why would you leave fish whenever they're biting? It's so much fun. Let me get back in the live one. Let's get back out there. All right, guys, well, we had quite the eventful day out here on the river. We started off kind of small by catching those, you know, those little white bass, the skipjack, and that small crappie. Um, but we were able to really improve on that and start catching some nice striper, which I honestly wasn't really planning on catching today. But I happened to see a few jumping, and, uh, you know, I couldn't resist myself. And we ended up getting some nice ones. We got several in the live wells back behind me that I'm excited to take home tonight to eat for supper. So I guess the plan is I'm going to get the boat loaded up. We're going to get these guys cleaned up back at the house and I will catch you guys whenever I get there. See you there. All right, guys, we are back here at the house. We are in the kitchen. I just got done cleaning the striper, and guys, take a look at this. Look at this bowl. It is full of beautiful striper fillets. I mean, this bowl is quite hefty, and it's just a sight that you love to see after a long days of striper fishing. We're gonna have a lot of striper meat to eat over the next few weeks, and uh, we're excited about that because striper have to be one of our favorite game fish to eat. I think it's definitely my favorite fish to eat. And it's really because there's so many different ways you can prepare striper. Um, one of our favorite ways, of course, is to make fish tacos out of it. It's also a really good grilled or deep fried, but our favorite way to cook striper, hands down, has got to be by boiling it on the stove in a bowl of water and this magic stuff right here. This is a crawfish, shrimp, and crab boil. And what it turns the striper into, essentially, is lobster meat. We're making poor man's lobster here at the Harkin residence. And guys, if y'all have not tried doing this yourself, I can't recommend it enough. I mean, it is so, so, so delicious. And it's a cost-effective way to get that sweet, buttery, smooth lobster and crab meat taste, you know, without having to pay that premium price. Now, I know striper aren't available everywhere, but if you are someone who is able to catch some striper and you're looking for a way to cook them, this is definitely a must try that you need to do at your own house. So what I wanna do is go through the steps 
in which we like to create this poor man's lobster dish. It's very, very simple. It's basically just cutting it up into like lobster or like lump crab meat sized pieces of meat and simply boiling it with this stuff on the stove like I already mentioned. So I'm gonna show you guys how we dice this up and uh, we're gonna get to cooking and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm super excited about it. Okay, so here's what the top strip of a striper filet looks like. So when you clean the whole thing, you're gonna have another part that comes off like this, like a triangle. Usually we'll take the triangle part and we'll use that for fish tacos. And this is the big lumpy, kind of like almost backstrap looking piece of meat that we use for the uh, poor man's lobster dish, as well as like for grilling. So what we like to do, from here is we actually like to cut the fish in half because you can kind of see it does this weird thing where it separates right here at the top and it kind of just like cubes off. So let me flip it over so you can see it just right around this line right here. So what we'll do, we just cut it right in half, just like this. And then what I like to do is just simply cube it up like this. Just, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Just cube it up into little chunks. That'd be great for boiling. Just cube it up. And this little piece right here won't do as great. Um, getting boiled, it's too small, so I'm just throw it back in the bowl and I'll add it to some of those smaller pieces that we use for fish tacos later. And again, we'll use it on this part right here too. Just cube it up nice and uniformly. And then again, this is kind of a smaller piece. Throw it in here and you can really see why we like to keep those fish that are in that you know that four to eight pound range because you get thicker pieces of meat that are great for cubing up like this. Now most of the fish we caught today were like three pounders so they're not as thick as I would like but that's okay because we did get a nice eight pounder mixed in which I hope to find in the bowl here in just a second. So here is what we're left with. We have a bowl full of beautiful chunked up striper meat. Here's one of the cubes up close so you can see it. And what's great about using striper for this dish and why we pretty much only use it for this dish is that it's really firm meat and it holds up to being boiled. So what we have to do now is we have to get this water on the stove boiling. I should have already had it going while I was cutting up the striper, but I kind of forgot, but it looks like it's getting there. And what we'll do is we're gonna add about a fourth of this bag of crawfish boil. This bag boils four pounds of crawfish if you dump the whole thing in there. And since these guys aren't hidden in a shell, we don't want it to be overkill in our experience. Um, it makes them way too spicy. So a fourth of this is just right. This is a small bag. So if you're looking to pick up some ingredients for this dish, this stuff is bomb. So we're gonna get this thing boiling and then we're gonna throw those guys in there. Okay, it's looking good now. And as you can see, I've got this little wire basket here in the middle. That's just to help kind of contain the fish. Sometimes it does flake apart a little bit. Um, but it only takes about three or four minutes to boil the, each piece of this. So I'm just going ahead and start grabbing a few handfuls out of the bowl and just kind of dropping them in without hopefully splashing all over the place. I could pull the cage up, I guess, but where's the danger in that? And I think I could put all of this in at one time. We'll just see how it goes. I would prefer it that way, but if we have to do two trips, that's fine too. We might have to do two trips. But you can see it's going to stop boiling and then it'll We'll bring it back to a boil here in just a second. We've got our bowl back up to a boil and you can see the fish are pretty much already done. You know they're done because they turn all the way white. Um, once they turn all white, I like to let them sit there for like another minute and a half, two minutes or so, and then I'll take them out. I don't want to overcook them. Those guys look great, but you also want to make sure you leave them in there long enough to where they soak up all of that crab boil flavor, which it's pretty easy to do because that stuff is really strong. Those look great. We're gonna take them out of there and transfer them here to this tray of aluminum foil in just a few moments. So that should about do it for our fish. Look how easy this cage makes it for transferring these fish from the bowl over here to the aluminum foil. I'm just kind of shake off the excess water. And boom, look at that. not falling apart too much. They all held together pretty well, which is exactly what you want. Man, that looks so good, guys. Does that not remind you of like some lump crab meat or something? Man, that looks so good. And you can see it's just steaming hot. But guys, look at what I just added to the mix here. We're not just having poor man's lobster. We're also having ourselves some fine little gulf shrimp. Always like to add some shrimp to the crab boil mix whenever we're doing this meal. It's just a nice little one-two combo. Who doesn't love shrimp? Man, those look good. And those guys will be done in just a moment. And they only take like five or six minutes to boil too, which is really great. But anyways, we're going to get this all done. We're gonna plate it all and it's going to be so delicious. <laughs> What's going on over here, guys? What's going on, Cy? Say nothing. Nothing. We're just having fun, aren't we? 
Do you smell the lobster in their side? <laughs> say, oh yeah, we smell. It. <laughs> that stuff does kind of. Um, I'm not gonna say stink up the house, but it definitely fills the house with a lot of Cajun and crab oil scent. Get your sinuses going, doesn't it, Cypress? <laughs> <laughs> Is mommy getting you with her bun? <laughs> Look at those teeth. He said, I'm ready to chow down into some scrum. Oh. We don't know if you have any shelf fish allergies yet, Cypress. No, we don't. So we can't give you any shrimp, unfortunately. Cypress already ate his dinner. Yeah, he just ate a milk. Ate a milk. Drank some milk. <laughs> well, and he also just drank some milk. <laughs> yeah. So he's good to go. You say hi. You say hi. Yeah. <laughs> this is my best friend. Mine too, so we're, <laughs> we're fighting for the same best friend. Oh, I love him. Okay, let's go eat. Uh oh. Okay, guys, this is what I have prepared for y'all today. We have our poor man's lobster, aka striper fillets, and then we have our gulf shrimp, and of course, two bowls of butter one for you, one for me to dunk it in. Go on ahead and get you some of that action. Ladies always go first. That is a lot of protein. That's a lot of protein, and we've been working out, so we need Here lots we of protein. Mmm. Mm. I can't even think of anything better than this. Really. I mean, it's like my favorite mm. thing. Oh, Cypress <laughs> wants it. Mmm. He said I can taste the crab boil in the air. He's like a snake. He's like sticking his tongue out. This is like too much for you. What does the snake say? What does the snake say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. We just haven't had it work out where we could all be there at the same time. <laughs> and yeah. catch the fish together. Jay's gone out there twice when the bigger fish were there. Yeah, Cypress is mad about it. You tell him. We're all sad him. about it. Stop leaving me out. I'm not yeah. leaving her out on purpose. You're really, you're really not leaving me out. I've had shingles for the past couple weeks, so yeah. I have not been okay. But now I'm okay, so I, now I can go. Yeah, I think those striper would probably flare back up the way they fight, honestly. Right. It wouldn't be good. Dang, let me get some I of that, homegirl. Let me get some of that. Let me get one taste on camera, and then we're going to shut this thing down, and we're going to enjoy this whole platter here. <laughs> okay, I've got a chunk here. That's a big chunk. Holy smokes. Oh, it's going everywhere. Here we go. So good. Mm. So good. <laughs> so good. Like way better than red lobster. Yes. Although I've really, I've honestly never had lobster red lobster before. So I can't really like compare it. But the red lobster, lobster are too expensive and this is like basically free. <laughs> that's so true. That's the, that's the uh, benefit of catching your own lobster from the river. But anyways, anyways. <laughs> tell them, tell them what we're about to do. Yeah. <laughs> we are, like I said, going to hang out here around this tray for the next 30 or 45 minutes, enjoy our dinner, and then we're gonna put this little rascal to bed. It's time for him to wind down. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, he's crazy tonight. He's so funny. <laughs> he needs to wind down. But anyways, hope that y'all enjoyed this catch and cook video. If y'all didn't, do us a huge favor by hitting that thumbs up button. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of these future catch and cook adventures. We're Colin J and Baby C, <laughs> and we will see you on the next one. Say, Say bye. 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 <laughs>